Hi, my name is Rich and a couple of months ago I did a review on the RIGO uh, 1052D, the DS1052D, which is a two-channel scope and 16-channel logic analyzer all together in one. And actually this is the uh, DS1152D because it has a software upgrade to go up to 150 megahertz. Um, but now I thought I would compare it to a new little tool I have, which is the Tech Tool, I guess it's called Tech Tools DigiView uh, Logic Analyzer. And this uh, DigiView is basically a, it's a DV3100 and it's a 16 18 channel logic analyzer. Uh, comes in this little box has a CD with it, has two of these uh, little clips that kind of the flying leads type of thing, plug it in for channel 0 through 8 and then channel uh, 9 through 17. And small USB type of uh, hookup and obviously it goes to your computer. And let's see just how much better or worse it is than the, the Rigol. Um, Cost-wise, the Rigol, this 150 megahertz one, was basically a little bit under a thousand dollars. And you can get the Rigol just the 100 megahertz, so that I think it's DS1152E, uh, the 100 megahertz one, for about uh, four hundred dollars. And this little guy is about five hundred dollars. We managed to get it for uh, our university. We got we bought two of them, got a nice discount, so we managed to get it for about four hundred dollars. That that was a pretty good deal. And so I think with the normal scope and this little unit, you will be pretty much at a little bit under thousand um, bucks. But let's see what the software does and what what this unit can do for you. Uh, 1152E, the 100 megahertz one, for about uh, $400. And this little guy is about $500. We managed to get it for uh, our university. We got we bought two of them, got a nice discount, so we managed to get it for about $400. Uh, that was a pretty good deal. And so I think with the normal scope and this little unit, you will be pretty much at a little bit under a thousand bucks. Um, but let's see what the software does and what, what this unit can do for you. If we just uh, hook this up, very simple, plug in your USB. Um, should indicate that we got something. We will hook it up to our flying lead thing. And I just got one signal going here. It's not exactly most uh, real nice interface. And actually, right now I got it in this mode, which if you stop it, it's kind of a mode for fast acquisition, and it just lets you see what's happening uh, with the signals. It really doesn't fill up the buffer or anything like that, but it's. Uh, somewhat comparable to the scope, what the scope does. And it seems like the updates are reasonably fast, so you can see if there is something happening and so on. And let me stop it and I can probably get my uh, get this programming going from the uh, my PIC uh, compiler and so on. And let's just get into this mode here and let's see if we can uh, so now actually there's something happening. There is this MUX that I have going here and so it's indicating activity and so on. And you can see the different bus activity here. Um, and you can hold it and you can start it again and so on. Very fast updates and so on. <coughs> and um, something about the software. I had a little bit of trouble getting it going on my laptop. Uh, I finally had to download the files they had online rather than using the CD. Uh, but after futzing around with it for about half an hour I got it going. So I, I don't think it's anything really 
Uh, most useful one is the fact that you have a bus that I can put the individual signals together. All I have is I have this uh, mux in here. I'm just using three bits right here, and so which isn't much. Um, individual other signals are all individual, and I can do. Uh, if I do into edit, I can do different colors, you know, I can change the color if I want. Typical, uh, I think it's typical Windows stuff. It obviously shows me the activity on the individual lines. Some of these lines right here, I don't have them grounded, nothing, so I think I'm getting some kind of a sporadic little blips. Um, and, um, and you can set it up uh, I think a couple of these things are just the normal one is the, the boolean, then you have the bus, and then you have different states. You can actually do the two wire decoding, such as I2C, SPI. It has a sync, async, and so on. So that's automatically built in. I haven't tried that, but I'm assuming it's going to work quite well. Uh, you have an analog signal, which is just uh, shows you that uh, it's changing through time, and it's probably it will be displayed as a digital signal, obviously. Um, and then you have the next screen which you have to get used to this one it's the triggering and it gives you two screens you actually manipulate it on this screen but here it gives you the code for it kind of to to interpret what's happening on this one uh, you have possibility of matching edges patterns uh, arithmetic equations greater than equal less than um, and you can add those uh, terms together uh, then you don't have to have any kind of a sequence you just go directly out and you can I can actually or this together if I want to usually have to come from this way and so on and it gives you uh, if you want to actually delete the trace the funny thing is you would think you could just kind of click on it hit delete that would be intuitive but no you have to go here and retrace it and it gets rid of it. Same thing here. So that's kind of a little bit weird, but you get used to it. Uh, obviously, it has a sequencer you could go through. I think each sequencer has a 20 bit counter. So you can go through up to 16 sequences, or I think they allow you to do two ORs with eight each, and so on. The one thing it doesn't have that a true logic analyzer has is that you could actually. Uh, have some kind of a loop and go back to see if the term has been met if the, you know basically kind of like a pre-arm has been if it has been uh, activated and so on it doesn't have any kind of a time actual time if a pulse doesn't happen in the next 20 microseconds go back uh, to another term but it, it seems like it certainly is much more advanced than whatever the right goal has so I think that that's gonna be pretty useful um, and uh, you also have uh, I think the analyzer we went through oh this one is just your standard uh, threshold um, it gives you obviously many of the normal thresholds I don't think it has anything negative so you can do ECL but I not too many people work with that and it gives you the nice thing of actually changing the uh, the buffer uh, size here so you don't have to have the whole uh, the buffer size is 512 uh, kilo samples so that's a nice one and of uh, they also have uh, a really nice uh, algorithm for compression and we'll see that later so you can capture an incredible amount of data uh, and again the right goal doesn't give you this kind of a chance to change it's basically set at 50 percent uh, prefill so you're stuck with that Okay, so now uh, let's see how capturing some of this data and how we can manipulate the data on screen. Uh, how long something took uh, from edge to edge, edge to edge. Uh, number, if you use one, you should use probably two because it really, the only thing it doesn't do, it doesn't display uh, uh, when you have in the display for measurements is here it just gives you m1 m2 m2 m3 which are these markers it doesn't do for example m1 to m4 it would be nice if you could hook it up that way but you can't 
but it gives you the individual times here for example between 1 and 2 right now I have 13.87 microseconds uh, let's you expand it uh, well, let's get back here let's you expand it and it's always sampling at <clears throat> the 100 mega samples uh, a second but since it has that compression algorithm that doesn't seem to be a problem for example if we look at uh, this whole thing uh, for example this whole capture in between if we go to here or if we uh, we can uh, for example we got 1.73 seconds from the actual trigger point and we're not at the end yet so it actually captured about two seconds worth of data so the depth is really nice uh, it is it's a pleasure to use uh, from that point of view and by doing right click on the mouse actually I'm drag dragging it around with this way or that way so the right click is actually once you get used to it it's pretty useful but it does take a little bit of time to get used to it and of course you can zoom into zoom in an area uh, into an area uh, the one nice thing immediately is the fact that you have the the buses the buses the fact that the Rigel the DS1052 D cannot you cannot label any kind of a trace you cannot do the buses seems very it's it's a bad shortcoming life is so much easier when you can have these buses you can actually uh, see some of the transitions on the bus for example here um, where was it obviously we have a little transition uh, you know uh, some kind of a glitch went to zero zero and you can just see so much uh, so much more quickly so much uh, it's uh, it's, mu it's much more uh, easily discernible if there is any activity and so on also the fact that I can uh, label the pulses uh, label the signals I can also invert them if I want to and and so on seems to be really nice um, and um, so I'm, I'm quite quite happy with this unit so far what I have seen the captures are just beautiful uh, the software besides the fact that you're using the right click uh, on the mouse which is unusual seems to be very good um, and um, and let me just show you the same signal here because I got it hooked up uh, with the Rigol I think we can do the same thing uh, let me zoom in so here we have now uh, the same hopefully kind of the same capture um, and you can see that uh, it just uh, for example, my uh, well, let's go to here. Um, for example, my bus, and this is the labeling for my bus. So I got the three bits of the bus here. The third bit, uh, the second bit two doesn't change, but it's just the interpretation of that bus is. It just takes longer. I got to have it labeled. It's kind of a pain in the neck. Um, and uh, um, let's expand this the information the information is definitely there um, so overall I would say this is a really nice unit I think it's worth the money um, if I was doing this again I would not buy the Rigol uh, the two channel uh, logic analyzer with the 16 channel uh, two channel scope with the 16 channel logic analyzer I think this you might end up paying maybe a hundred uh, 120 dollars more but the product seems to be just so much easier to use and I think you get all the information you need to I've checked some, uh, into some of the signaling even though the rival samples at about uh, with the 16 channels it should be sampling at a, at uh, half a giga samples and this samples only at 100 seems the unless you're doing uh, things very fast so for my pick uh, microcontroller stuff it, it's perfectly adequate it seems like the 100 mega samples are, is plenty but 18 channels definitely adequate it has a lot of the features of what the 
uh, standard logic that analyzers have. So thank you for watching.